Hello. Today, we're going to be talking about lies and the truth and how lies can impact our individual connection with the truth, our individual connection with our truth cord, which grounds us in reality, and how it can impact the collective, how it can impact... I'll talk about entropy. This word entropy keeps coming up for me. And I'll talk about what it means too, because when it first came up for me, I didn't know exactly what it meant. So I've written a lot about lies, the impact of lies and the impact of the truth. I've written about this before because I had a very strong reaction to an experience I had in my early 20s. Um, and what I'm interested in now, I, I see in hindsight how that affected my own, how that experience affected my own grounding in my truth and my intuition. For many years, I had a strong, a very strong disconnection with my intuition because of the lies I had been told. And now what I'm most interested in is how lies can impact the collective and what I'm seeing and sensing out there in the world, out there in the field. Right. <clears throat> There's two lev levers that I see as opportunities to unravel the lives, the lies in our own lives, to unravel the lies for us individually. Because there's so much misinformation and not misinformation like you hear it about it on the news, okay? I'm talking about a different kind of misinformation. There's a lot of lies out there in the world that we might think are true. And we can't control, you know, that people be held accountable or things like that. What we can control is our individual relationship with actual reality, with disillusionment, with denial, which is a fundamental rejection of reality and the truth. And I see that happening quite, quite a bit, a frightening amount these days. So the two levers that I see here in unraveling the lies in our lives, and we can only, this is the only thing we really have control over is unraveling the lies for us individually. Number one is deconditioning and escaping the shackles of indoctrination. Being able to identify indoctrination and being able to identify what is our conditioning. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to change it. It just means that you need to be aware of it. And it's really sneaky. It's really, really sneaky. That's what propaganda and indoctrination is all about. You don't know that you've been indoctrinated. So being able to identify it is the first step. And I find it to be a total rush. <laughs> the second lever here is being honest with ourselves about who we are and what we stand for. And sometimes being honest with others as well. But you know, the first step is really being honest with ourselves about who we are and what we stand for. And I think this is really the, the, one of the foundational tools in the mystery schools is know thyself, right? And there are so many tools that we have at our disposable, uh, disposable, at our disposal to be able to know ourselves. There's, well, I won't get into them now, but we'll be talking about them in the mystery school. You can get on the wait list at the, the, the risecollective.org. So I see these two levers as deeply courageous acts because they're countercultural. And yeah, so I'm going to get into what lies perpetuate in the collective. Everything has to be revealed at some point, whether it's on a grand scale or whether it's for me or for you. And it can happen at the end of your life. It can happen right now. In the mystery school, we look to Mother Earth as our teacher. And the nature of nature is 
the truth. A tree doesn't lie about who it is or what it's doing or what it's up to, right? A tree just is. So this is my baseline. The natural order of things is the truth. Lying is against nature. If you believe a lie, if you mistake a lie for truth, no matter how positive or loving or peaceful it makes you feel, and indoctrination often does make us feel loving and positive or like we're a good person. If you believe a lie or if you mistake a lie for truth or if you're perpetuating a lie, you're feeding negativity and you're feeding entropy. And I'm going to define what entropy is because when this word first came up for me, I didn't know what it meant exactly. When you believe a lie, you're allowing your energy and allowing your awareness to be stolen away. You're giving your power away to a liar or liars. You're allowing yourself to be manipulated. And when you allow yourself to be manipulated, you're hemorrhaging your free will. You're hemorrhaging your empowerment, your personal power. And personal power is the probably the most important aspect of self-development in our shamanic lifestyle. So if you are a shamanic practitioner, if you are practicing a shamanic lifestyle, you have to get on top of this, man, or else you're just a fraud. So lies are aligned with the principle of entropy because the more lies that the world contains, the less organized that the world becomes, right? The more fragmented it becomes and the more energy is spent by various entities to maintain all of the complexity of the illusion and the lies and avoiding, avoiding the self, avoiding the truth and avoiding disillusionment. So like I said before, it's denial, which is a fundamental rejection of what is so, rejection of reality. And all of this, so it's kind of like when if you have ever told a lie, which I imagine many of us have, if you tell a lie, you kind of have to keep telling the lie or expanding on the lie to keep the lie going. Like if you cheat on somebody, you might tell a lie about where you were and then you're telling a lie about what you were doing and then you're telling a lie about who you were with. And it's just like this cycle that keeps going. And so it, you're maintaining this illusion and a lot of energy goes to doing that. And then if you're the person being lied to, oh my goodness, there's a whole bunch of energy being spent trying to align like your intuition with what you're being told and you're just wasting all this energy. So when this is happening, all this energy is being tied up, which could otherwise be used and expressed creatively, right? It's completely disconnecting us from our truth cord, which grounds us to the truth. It grounds us to our intuition. It grounds us to nature, the nature of things, the, the order of things, which is the truth, right? Like we talked about earlier with the tree. So, and this is true, like I said, in an individual scale, like I talked about the cheating, and it's also true on the collective scale. I'm not going to get into that. I could, but I don't want to answer a bunch of angry comments about conspiracy theories in the comments. So I'm going to share with you a quick example of a personal way that I gave up my power to a liar. And I experienced that disconnection and that entropy for several years after that. And I don't think I've defined entropy yet. Um, I want to make sure I define that for you. So Entropy is a loss of information in a transmitted message. So it's kind of like if you've ever, if you're a computer person, you might know that when you save a picture as a JPEG, it condenses the file. 
and then you save it again as a JPEG and it condenses the file more. And each time that you're saving this image as a JPEG, you're losing information, you're losing color, you're losing pixels, you're losing definition of the photograph. So that's what entropy is. All right. So back to my personal story. Several years ago, I was spending all my time with this good friend. She was my housemate. I had moved out to cross country with her from college. Our friendship was super special and we have lots of awesome memories together. And one day after, you know, we had been friends for a pretty long time, I found out that she had been dating my ex-boyfriend for a year and a half and lied to me about it or just omitted information, never told me about it. And I saw her every single day. <laughs> so she spoke Port Portuguese and she would speak in her native Portuguese in front of me with our mutual friend who also spoke Portuguese and they would talk about this guy um, in Portuguese in front of me. And then, she, you know, sometimes I would say, oh, I miss him or whatever else. And she would scold me when I brought up anything about him and kind of gaslight me about it. And the worst part <laughs> was that she also got her whole group of friends to lie to me about it. And at the same time, this guy was writing me love letters from like Fiji or some other place in the universe. The guy is completely irrelevant. I'm talking about the friendship. <laughs> so <clears throat> in hindsight, there were so many mo moments when she manipulated me and lied to me during that whole year and a half. I, I have a felt sense of the feelings that I felt in those moments. And <clears throat> looking back, I knew that was something was off, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I, I also didn't have the communication skills to communicate that I was sensing something was happening or to be able to question what was happening and be in relationship about it. And I also never would have guessed that she would do such a thing or that she would go to such great lengths to lie. And I imagine that this is one of those situations where you tell one lie and then you tell another lie and then you're just getting deeper and deeper into the lie like we were talking about before. So since everyone around me was also lying, I started to distrust my, my intuition and I started to think, oh, it's okay. Just, you know, silence those thoughts or those feelings that were coming up. And as I know from working with dream work, voices that we don't acknowledge learn to stop talking. Like if you stop writing down your dreams, you'll stop dreaming. When I write down my dreams, more dreams come because I'm acknowledging them. And when I listen to my intuition, more information presents itself and comes into my awareness because I'm trusting myself. In contrast, I learned the hard way that when I ignore my intuition, it disappears, it goes away. When I found out that all that was happening, that there were so many lies happening in my life, I was totally devastated. I felt like the rug was pulled out from under me. I didn't know who I could trust and my friendships were irreparably damaged. My friends justified their behavior and, and minimized my feelings, minimized my rage. They told me that they felt they didn't have a choice to lie. And I imagine a lot of liars feel like they don't have a choice. <clears throat> and again, looking back, I, I wish I would have had some of those skills that I have now where I could, you know, ask questions or slow down or be more curious. And that's one of these tools here, slowing down, um, being curious. That's one of the tools for um, deconditioning and allowing space to allow the truth to arise, right? Allow it to emerge. 
So what followed those years of building relationships and um, friendships on lies were years of disconnection from my intuition. And I had to heal from that. Lying usually seems pretty harmless, right? Especially white lies. Uh, It can seem like, oh, it's just one little lie. But when we lie, the person that we lie to begins to just trust their intuition because the nature of things is the truth, right? No matter how well-meaning our intentions are, as long as we support lies by mistaking them for truth or by not speaking against them and going along or feeling like we don't have a choice, we'll keep feeding that entropy in the world, that loss of information, that condensing of information. That it's not condensing, it's a loss of information in a transmitted message. These dogs are so annoying. (laughs) And these people love to yell at their dogs. So we have to meet every place in ourselves that is afraid of telling the truth. We have to see the belief structure that tells us, I can't do that. I can't, I can't tell the truth. And until you've given the freedom to everyone to like you or not like you or to love you or to hate you or to see things as you see them or see them differently, until you've given the whole world freedom to be how they are, you'll never have your freedom. Hopefully you can hear me over those horrible dogs. Wanting to control the outcome of how people see you, of how people view you and what people think about you, it's just another manifestation of suppressing the feminine because it's control. And we've talked about this before. We can't be true to ourselves as long as we're expecting or wanting other people to agree with us as long as we're wanting to be right. As long as we're wanting to control the outcome of things. The outcome of relationships, the outcome of situations, right? That causes us to contract. Maybe they won't like what what I say. Maybe they won't agree with me. Maybe they won't like me. When we're protecting ourselves, we're also withholding freedom from other people. Freedom for them to think what they think and say what they say. And that's happening a lot right now. If you look out at social media. So back to these two lovers here that I see in unraveling the lies in our individual lives. Lives. Lies in our lives. Those are one deconditioning and escaping the shackles of indoctrination and in order to do this you have to allow that space for curiosity instead of being committed to being right about what you think you know most of what we think we know is a belief and you know that because a belief is not true 100 percent of the time A fact is true 100% of the time. We'll be learning a lot more about deconditioning and de-indoctrination and free thinking in depth in the RISE Collective Mystery School. So keep an eye out for that. I'm building the curriculum right now. And you can sign up at the wait list at um, therisecollective.org. When you continue feeding yourself lies by allowing yourself to be indoctrinated, you are feeding the entropy, the loss of information in a transmitted message, entropy of the collective. You're feeding negativity, you're feeding disempowerment, you're feeding liars, and you're feeding a very alive energetic of manipulation and illusion. 
and disempowerment. And, you know, I see so many people out there who are thinking, you know, we talked about the road to hell is paved with good intentions a few podcasts ago. I see a lot of people trying to do good. Like I have this one person that I know who studied public relations in college and then she went on to study public health indoctrination central and I hear now she's going to nursing school and I'm like man that's a lot of indoctrination to put yourself through and I imagine it's in service of the greater good right and when you're when you're identity is that you know you're a good person and your you your identity is your career public public health people um, in particular and um, nurses and doctors in particular are deeply deeply indoctrinated into a particular set of beliefs and a particular system which they you know often claim as science and and it's not necessarily science if you're if you're censoring out um, research and information based on if you like it or not, based on if it aligns with your beliefs or not. So that's a side note. So the second, the second lever that I just want to review is being honest with ourselves about who we are and what we stand for. Even just remember radical honesty, even one little white lie can have a massive impact on our own connection to our to our intuition and on the collective and as I just said radical honesty I'm remembering one of my friends said recently something like what is radical about being honest like we said in the beginning it's not radical it's the nature of things it's just radical in this moment in time it's courageous um, in this world that we live in that's full of illusion. So I hope this gave you some things to chew on and I look forward to talking more about lies and the truth and the nature of things with you. I'll talk to you soon.